Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Let's start our video with a story about the time a broken sprinkler system turned a quiet winter evening at a restaurant into chaos. Visiting a restaurant when literally everything went down the drain. This happened 10 years ago in the winter. Me and my friend went to a restaurant to grab some food and a few beers. We got our beers and started with the appetizers, and my friend, the owner, sat down at the table to have a chat. It had been really cold for a long time, and most people stayed home because of it, and the restaurant wasn't actually crowded. The layout of the restaurant is kitchen and bar in one end and two large rooms for the tables. The rooms are separated by a wall with openings at each end for the waiters to go their rounds. There were a few guests in each room, so like I said, it wasn't crowded. Suddenly, it started dripping water from the ceiling in the other room. Not much, but only a few drops, and they hit a woman in the head. We're quite relaxed in my country, so she simply moved away from the dripping and over to another table. It was cold outside, so it might just be condensation. After a few minutes, it got very clear that wasn't the issue. We heard a bang, and the pipe for the sprinkler system broke. The water in it had frozen. Water started to flow, and the table they were sitting on was hit directly. The sprinkler system has quite a high pressure to it, and the water kept gushing out, and everyone at that table were getting soaking wet. The guests jumped out of their chairs and to a dry place before they left and went home. The owner and waiters ran around like headless chickens and didn't know what to do. It was complete chaos. My friend that I was with ran after asking the owner where the water valves were downstairs and into the valve room where he turned the water off while I was calling the fire department. They asked me a bunch of questions and I answered them the best I could. I explained to them that I don't work here, but somebody needed to take charge of the situation. I was simply a guest. All the guests went, of course, home. Nobody sued anyone, as that's not something we usually do here when accidents happen. Me and my friend sat back down at our table and finished our food and beers while the fire department sucked all the water up and did damage control. The owner came and sat down with us again, and we talked about what he needed to do if it should happen again. Our food and beers were, of course, comped by the owner. Sorry for the lack of Karens. Edit. We just did what we had to do to save our favorite restaurant as the boss himself, our friend, was panicking. After all, we wanted to visit him and the place again as we get good food, good service, and a huge discount every time we enter there. I wonder why we get the discounts. It sounds like you're super helpful and chill. Thanks for the oddly wholesome story. And our second story. Hospital employee tries to kick me out of the family waiting room. A few months ago, my dad was admitted to the hospital and later transferred to their rehab unit. I was coming to the hospital every day to check on him and make sure he was eating properly, and if any of the nurses or doctors had questions or information they needed, I could quickly answer it for them. I was also working, so I set up camp in the family room, which is open to all family members of patients. There was a small desk in the corner of the room. I set my laptop there and worked. Then after my shift ended, I would go back to my dad's room and spend time with him until visiting hours ended. The family room is usually empty during the daytime. I have my headphones on and worked quietly. If another family member does come in, I let them know they can turn the TV on and not to worry about me. My headphones drown out the noise and I know it's a shared room. One day while working, three nurses walk in and see me. One of them says, what are you doing here? We want this room. Sure, please use the big table or any other space you want. I'm a family member, was told I can use this room. I'm just using the small desk and don't worry about me, noises won't bother me. She says, no, I want you to leave, we want the whole room. I say, no, this is a shared room. You can do what you need to here. I'm not leaving, but more than happy to share. She huffs and leaves. The other two look embarrassed. A few minutes later, another woman walks in and questions why I'm working out there and I should give up the room to three nurses. I ask her where I should go. I was told this room is for family members and I'm free to work out of it. She looks annoyed and says, did you tell them you're a family member and not staff? Yep, I told them I was a family member. She then apologized and said, you have first rights to this room as a family member and they should know better than to ask you to leave. They can't kick you out. I'll go and talk to them and tell them they have to find another room. Okay, thank you, but I'm still willing to share as I don't mind others are in the room. 
She smiled and left, and I never saw those three nurses again for the rest of the two weeks I was there. I like to always use the positive, call hospital admin and praise the heck out of the last nurse that set them straight. It takes a lot of courage to stand up when outnumbered for what's right. And our next story. I want free help, but not like that. I'm a reseller on the side and happen to sell vintage items. I had a sale recently and a lady came through looking for some very specific items that I unfortunately didn't have. One item being a particular brand of a vintage tea set. We got to chatting about our mutual hobby of collecting old items and she asked if I could contact her if I happened across one of the items she was searching for. I occasionally help source items for customers or tip them off to other sellers if I come across something they're looking for but may not be worth my time to purchase and resell because of limited profit margins or lack of means to get it home. So I told her, sure, I'll let you know if I see the tea set in my treasure hunts. I took down her number. Later that evening, I'm scrolling through some local sales pages, and what do I happen to come across? The exact teapot and part of the tea set she was looking for, in perfect condition, for only $10. I messaged the lady from earlier. Hi, lady's name. This is OP from the vintage sale. I happened upon an item you might be interested in. Here's the link with a link to the teapot and partial set. I wasn't expecting a response, but she messaged back, well, where's the rest of it? A thanks would have been nice, but I ignored the lack of decorum and replied back, this isn't my listing, but you mentioned you were hunting for this, so I just figured I'd send it along. Enjoy. She responds, this isn't even the full set. Why would I even want this? I responded, it's hard to find full sets of vintage china, but maybe check eBay instead. Have a good evening. I thought that would be the end of the conversation, but she kept on. eBay? I don't have time to search through eBay, and I'm not paying those kind of prices. I just ignored her. She continued. Find out where the rest of the set is. I just blocked her at this point. The entitlement of this woman rubbed me the wrong way. I did a charitable thing by letting her know where she could find some great pieces of this old tea set. Not only was there absolutely zero acknowledgement of the favor, but Lady doubled down and tried to make me do extra work for her. Ugh. Thankfully, most of my customers are grateful when I point them towards a good deal they can get at cost. But this lady was something else. No good deed goes unpunished. Wow. I, I think you did a lovely thing. And shame on her for reacting like that. I would have been excited even just to source one piece. And our last story. And our next story. Parking at my work is a nightmare. I'm an overnight security guard. I work 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. most nights. I'm with a company that has contracts with other companies for security, usually hotels, apartment complexes, clubs, etc., for this one particular site, I work at 90% of the time, the parking is terrible. It's a luxury hotel, and the parking garage is nowhere near as accommodating as it should be. The hotel has valet and a restaurant on the top floor. The parking garage is only two floors, maybe 100 spots for all employees and hotel restaurant guests. They recently made it so that roughly a quarter of the garage is reserved for employees, which is nowhere near enough. They also made it so you need a parking permit to park there. If you don't have a permit, you get towed. One warning allowed via a sticker on your car. The garage is also valet only for non-employees. Only other option is to pay to park in the street. Personally, I have three cars, not counting my SOs, that I drive on occasion. The parking permits list your car's year, make, model, color, and license plate number. My boss told me that the permits are transferable between cars, but they'll come and ask you why the permit does not match the car. My boss told me to say, well, boss's name told me that the permits are transferable between cars, and this is the car I drove today. Also, I asked them for permits for all of my cars to save time, and they said every person only gets one permit. I was also told they have to check every time the permit does not match whether they know the car or not. Cue malicious compliance. The day I received my permit, I continued to drive a different car every day. One of my three cars, my SO's car, my mom's car, her boyfriend's car. Every car I was able to drive, I drove to work. After a while, management was starting to get upset about it. I gave them the same answer every time. I told them, well, my boss said they're transferable, and this is the car I drove here today. 
After about a month and a half of this, I came in one day to my office, and there it was in all its glory. A stack of permits for every single car I ever drove to work, each with their year, make, model, color, and tag number. Work 0, OP1. Neighbor's Fence on My Property Hello, I'm in the United States, the state of California, and in Riverside County. I'm having a problem with my neighbor's fence that's on my property. They built the fence just shy of five years ago, and I purchased the property about a year and a half ago. It took me until the last month to notice that their fence, which they built to extend off of an interior fence that's on my property, and only set back a foot from the interior fence, actually extended onto my property at an angle, reaching 14 feet onto my property at its greatest point. I talked to the neighbors and they agreed that a survey was the first thing that we needed to get before we moved forward. We already had a survey that was done decades before, but they wanted another one. I agreed and they said they would split the cost of the survey. A couple days later, before I got the survey done, they reneged on splitting the cost of the survey. I went ahead and got the survey done at my own expense. The results of the survey affirmed my initial concern that their fence was on my property. I notified them of the results, and they started blaming the fencing company, saying they reassured them that the fence was on the property line. I talked to the person at the fencing company who originally installed the fence, and he told me that he voiced his concerns that the fence was not on the property line, but my neighbor told him to go ahead anyways. For several weeks, we went back and forth via email about what to do about the fence until I said that I wanted them to remove the fence that was on my property. I made it clear that that was my wish and gave them eight days to give me a timetable of when they planned to remove the fence. They didn't respond with their intention to remove the fence, but only came back with other solutions such as paying for the cost of a new perimeter fence or me giving them permission to use the property that their fence was encroaching on. I continued to state that I only wanted their fence removed from my property. What also bothers me is the fact that my neighbor's wife is a judge, which can play into their favor even if they're wrong. After the eighth day, I started removing the fence myself. They emailed me saying that it was a civil matter that could only be adjudicated in court and I would be liable for the damages that would incur if I continued to take down the fence. They called the cops while I was removing the fence and the police officer said that they could not stop me from removing the fence that was on my property. I finally finished the removal of the fence on my property and am keeping the fencing materials that I removed in my garage. They're now threatening me with a small claim suit for damages that they will not specify. I haven't received any court papers yet. And I'm wondering if I was fully within the letter of the law in my removal of the fence. I've heard from a couple of people and online that they're entitled to their fencing material back, even if they installed it knowingly on my property and refused to remove it themselves in a timely manner, and that they can also claim that I must pay for half of a new perimeter fence along the property line. I don't think it's necessarily true that you're stealing the fence material. At traditional common law, at least, an unwanted improvement on your property belongs to you. If the previous owner didn't agree to having the fence on his or her land, I'm pretty sure the fence belonged to you. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.